Don't look at me. <laughs> what the? Okay, Miss Smith. I'm Dr. Rod. No, start over. <laughs> okay, Miss Smith. I just wanted to go over everything that we discussed, and today you came in presenting with leakage of fluid, vaginal bleeding, contractions, and complained that your baby wasn't moving enough. After seeing and evaluating you today, I feel reassured that uh, you're safe and ready to go home. That your first complaint was that you had some leakage of fluid. Uh, <coughs> I don't think that your bag of water is broken, and the way I know that is because we checked the fluid around the baby with an ultrasound and your amniotic fluid level was uh, approximately 15, which is within normal. <coughs> we also did a speculum exam and you had no pooling, nitrazine, or ferning, which are all let us know that you don't have uh, amniotic fluid leaking out. Um, <coughs> so as, as far as that, I'm reassured that your bag of water didn't break. Do you have any questions? But I still feel like I'm leaking or something. I'm too wet down there. What is it? Okay, well, uh, sometimes you can feel a sensation of uh, leaking, but it can be various different things besides amniotic fluid. One thing, it can be your urine, and your uterus can be pressing down on your bladder and causing you to leak urine. <coughs> One other thing that we're concerned about is a urine infection. Uh, sometimes if it's urine that you're leaking, um, however, we checked the urinalysis and your, it's, it's negative. Um, other things that are possible are discharge. Um, and we did do a wet mount today and we didn't see any uh, evidence of a yeast infection, trichomonas, or bacterial vaginosis, which is another uh, thing that can be causing this uh, sensation of wetness. Um, <coughs> you could also have uh, that sensation after having intercourse. Um, it can also just be uh, sweat. Um, those are some common things I can think of. Um, but, like I said, we checked and everything seems to be fine. Any other questions you might have? What about my bleeding? Okay, so um, one thing that we're worried about um, when you're having bleeding, especially this late in the pregnancy, is if uh, your placenta is having some problems. And specifically, if and you're having an abruption, which is when your placenta separates from the uterus. Um, but I also feel reassured that that's not happening. You're actually having ju just uh, some spotting and uh, mucus mixed with with blood. Um, and we did an ultrasound again, and your placenta looked okay on the ultrasound. I didn't see any obvious abruption or separation of the placenta. But it is true that we don't always see that on ultrasound. Um, but you also don't have any signs or symptoms of an abruption. You don't have uh, frequent, uh, painful contractions. <coughs> We're only picking up very infrequent contractions, and um, usually when you're having an abruption, we see contractions uh, even less than one minute apart. Um, <coughs> also, uh, you were just having a small amount of bleeding, and you were also complaining of contractions. And I did do an exam, and you're only you're two centimeters dilated, and your cervix is soft. It's approximately 50% a face. And um, I think that now that you're near your due date in a few days, uh, your body might be getting ready to go into labor, and you're having some uh, early changes in your cervix, and that might be the uh, cause of the sweating. I'm uh, sorry, of the spotting. Other causes of um, the spotting can be uh, if you had like a, a infection, uh, a vaginal infection. But like I said earlier, we did uh, a wet mount and we didn't find any evidence of infection. So I should just so this bleeding is okay. I should just not worry if I have bleeding. Um. Well, you know, <coughs> bleeding, especially this late in pregnancy, is very worrisome. Again, because we're worried about if there's a separation of your placenta. Um, so if when you go home, if you have any more bleeding, um, especially if it's uh, heavy or more than a period, um, and if it's bright red, then that's very concerning and I would come back right away. But if you continue to have this sort of uh, small amount of spotting, or actually you just had some pink mucusy discharge, um, <coughs> it might be why you're losing your mucus plug or early cervical changes. Um, the other thing that I do want to mention is that um, 
that can be causing uh, bleeding was one, intercourse, and two, um, placenta previa. <coughs> we have uh, noted in your prenatal care as well as the ultrasound today that you have a posterior placenta that's far away from the cervix, <coughs> and we don't think that your bleeding is caused by a placenta previa. Okay, do you have any more questions about bleeding? No, I'm okay. Okay. The next thing that um, you came in um, having issues with, and I see that you're having contractions now still. Um, <coughs> unfortunately, sometimes uh, you can have contractions that <coughs> are sort of called Braxton Hicks contractions and are not actually causing your cervix to dilate very much. Um, and they're not, it's not, they're not real uh, labor contractions. So, have you heard of that before? I think so. Okay. Um, so, we did, like we did an exam today and you were two centimeters dilated and 50% of face. I actually repeated the exam two hours apart and your cervix was unchanged. And I do know that you're having these occasional painful contractions, but it's not true labor as your cervix hasn't changed. Okay, so do you understand that? Do you have any questions about that? Well, how do I know if I'm in labor or not? How do I know if my cervix is changing? Right, it's, it would be difficult for you to know unless you actually did an exam. <coughs> um, but I don't expect you to do that on yourself. So, um, labor contractions uh, usually, believe it or not, are even more painful than the ones you're having now. Um, and they would, the precautions that we give you to come back are if you have more than four to six contractions in one hour, okay, that's if they're closer than 10 minutes apart, and they're painful and regular. So if you go home and you have painful, regular contractions, uh, it can, even if they are um, <coughs> less than 10 minutes apart, they can also still be Braxton Hicks contractions. So I understand that it can be confusing. What I would do if you went home is and, you're, and you continue to have contractions, I would count how many minutes apart they are. And if they are less than 10 minutes apart, you can try resting a little bit, drinking some water, and if it still persists for over an hour, um, then that might be concerning. And I would call your doctor before coming in. Okay. Any questions? No, I think I understand now. Okay. Um, the last thing you, you were worried about was that your baby wasn't moving enough. Um, that is also very concerning, close to your due date. Um, again, we're worried that your baby, for some reason, isn't getting enough oxygen or enough blood, uh, and there's a compromise in the placenta, and that's why you don't feel the baby move. But I'm glad that since you came in, now you're feeling that the baby have regular movements. What we did to make sure and reassure ourselves that the baby is okay, we did the ultrasound, and. Um, the ultrasound we noted that the baby's fluid was good and we also watched the baby's movements and breathing movements and those are also normal. <coughs> we also um, have been monitoring your baby now for over two hours and the baby's fetal heart rate strip is reassuring in what we call category one. Um, putting that together you have a biophysical profile score which is a score we use that combines um, what we saw in the ultrasound and the fetal heart rate strip and you have a your baby gets a score of 10 out of 10, which is very reassuring. Your baby is doing well. So what happens if I don't feel my baby move again? Okay, um, that's a very important question. If you don't feel your baby moving uh, often uh, or normal for your baby, then that's very concerning. Have you been taught how to do kick counts? No, no one's mentioned these. Okay. Um, so kick counts are very important, okay? Um, what you would do is, starting around, uh, at, <coughs> at the latest by 28 weeks, uh, you take some time during each day, find a quiet place, and uh, lay on your left side for one hour, and count the number of times your baby kicks, and kicks can include jabs and or actual kicks um, and any kind of significant fetal movement. And on average, um, what we recommend is that the, your baby moves 10 times in that first hour. 
If your baby doesn't move at least 10 times in that first hour, then you can extend that for one more hour. And so by two hours, there should be 10 movements. But most babies will move at least 10 times in the first half an hour. Okay? Um, so does that make sense? You Can you repeat those instructions to me? So I lay on my left side. I drink something cold and try and feel my baby move, which might be jab or movement. I try for an hour to feel 10 movement. But if that doesn't happen, wait an extra hour and see if those 10 movements occur by then. If not, then I come straight to labor and go. Right. And like I said, um, once a baby, it's more, most babies will move, you know, that many times in the first half an hour. Um, and th if that happens, you can just stop. Okay, if you count 10 movements, then you can stop. But everything in my body hurts, and I'm just tired of being pregnant. Okay, well, um, you're only 38 weeks now. That's term. Yeah. Yes, it is, but... Um, it's still not uh, 39 weeks, and the reason why that's important is that although after 37 weeks that's term, babies do much better if we wait till at least 39 weeks. But I don't sleep anymore. Um, well, we can call, you know, I th we, like I said, we don't do any... I, you're not in labor, so if we were to keep you here and have your baby, that would mean that we're inducing you. So I still have to be pregnant? Yes. Fine, I'll go home. You. Let me help you out of here. Oh, oh my god, your baby <laughs> delivered. I'm glad I have my gloves in my back pocket. I always carry a set of sterile gloves with me.